All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, special meeting tonight, September 28, 2022, 6 30 p.m. at the Park Shelter House. Good evening, Council, Administrators, the Deputy Fire Chief, and our great audience tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you would call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm is absent. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Steve Treston. Father well, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Thank you for this chance to be together for this meeting, Lord. We pray that you please let thy perfect will be done. And we pray, Lord, that you keep that mighty hand upon our city, our citizens, our first responders, and our troops and families. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe. All righty, moving on. Um, action on minutes, none. Uh, communications. So communications tonight is, for some of you probably have, have went through it once, or, once already, but uh, DDC, Mr. Uh, Clayton, he is going to uh, play the uh, video that was played a few meetings back just to give kind of a, a, a computer-generated look of what, it, uh, what the uh, development would look like. So we'll go through that. Thank you very much, sir. All right, moving on. Uh, see manager's report. You have any reports tonight, sir? I do not. You sure? I mean, we could make one up if you want. <laughs> I'm good. All right, uh, moving on to uh, comments from members of the public. So if you haven't been here before, if you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address for the for public records, because all this is for public records, and uh, try to keep it to five minutes so everybody has time, because there's a lot of you here. We'll go off of this when this 
starts flashing yellow, you've got a minute left. When you get to red, your five is up. So uh, I know we've seen a lot of you here before. Thank you all for coming. Uh, just so everybody isn't here till 10 or 12 o'clock at night, if someone wants to talk about, you know, if someone's going to go over traffic or, you know, whatever it may be, try to, let's not get 10 people talking about traffic. Let's try to narrow it down so everybody's, you know, I'm sure everybody wants to get home and do dinner or, what, or see the kids or whatever. So, but we also want to hear what you have to say. So uh, with that being said, uh, if anybody would like to go to the podium. Um, my name is Tanya Wells, um, 5330 Eastland Drive, New Carlisle, Bethel Township, Miami County. You guys know that I'm against the development. Um, I've made it known, traffic, all the stuff that you just said. But more than anything, the greatest of all these is what it's going to do to the schools. Due to the previous annexations, something that's out of the control of the schools and even the township, Bethel Local Schools has taken the hardest hit. And I know we talked about schools, but I want to give you some context, some numbers, some things that actually haven't been said before. Um, I want to look at it from my perspective. My son, my son is a sophomore. He started school in 2012, kindergarten. So 10 years, I'm looking at 10 years, which according to all these developments, well, it's only going to be 10 years and then they'll be developed and processed. In 10 years, 764 new students were added to the district. In 2018 to 2019 alone, 139 of them. One year, 139. For a small rural school, that drastic change almost doubled, almost doubled the amount in 10 years. And it has been impossible to accommodate. In those 10 years, um, the average student who are economically did it in disadvantaged, so the average in 10 years is 21.44 percent. Okay, in 2012, so um, only two years into building carriage trails, which is very similar to this, the economically disadvantaged was 14.5 percent. So that's a huge jump in 10 years. Okay, this makes me question what I've heard, that these are high-priced homes. So that means the development equates to greater income. If that were the case, then why do we have what we have? Those homes are high-priced homes as well, and we're not seeing that. In these 10 years, there's also been increase to English as a second language. There's also been an increase to students with disabilities, all of which a very small school was not equipped to handle when it comes at this, this level. They're still not prepared. In 2012, so when my son started, Bethel was K through 12, all one building. There was already trailers out there due to the annexation park town that started in 20, um, 2003 and carriage trail that development started in 2010. So in 2012, when my son started K through 12, there were already trailers. As it stands, the high school is full. The elementary being built is set, is already going to be full upon opening. And by now you know that denying students has less to do with money and more to do with the fact of the legalities and the hoops that have to be jumped through to not have these students go. So I ask you, with all the other stuff you already know, please consider what you would be doing to our schools. We don't have a way to say no, really, not with all these things. So be a good neighbor and start your developments within your own county lines <laughs> and keep Miami County the way it is. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Next. Matthew Mills, 285 Zeller Drive. I'm going to voice the same against this particular development. Today marks the day that many in the community have been tracking for several months. On March 7th, 2022, with potential housing development on the corner of New Carlisle and Scarf Road was made public during a council meeting. It was not the agenda for that meeting, but it was the only item any member of the public really cared about. That meeting was 205 days ago. Since that day, the council has heard from neighbors adjacent to the property, Bethel Township Miami trustees, Bethel local school board members, New Carlisle city residents, and Bethel Township Clark residents that reside in the Tecumseh local school district. The common theme around this development over the past 205 days has been resistance by those that want to voice their, who want their voice to be heard. That has been consistent across all demographics. 
So much so that should the council approve the three ordinances on the agenda for action tonight, there is already a referendum petition for all three ordinances ready to be printed. Not only are the petitions ready, but there is already a dedicated workforce to begin collecting signatures as early as tomorrow and throughout the weekend at the Heritage of Flight Festival. Understanding that this is not a matter of if, but when those required signatures will be collected and turned into the city. Since March, I have voiced and will continue to voice that my concern is and will always be with the comes to local schools. Others will have their own reasons for being against the development, but I will leave them to speak for themselves. New Carlisle should be allowed to grow, but not at the expense of the schools. And the development that is being voted on is the first of four potential future housing developments. With, while this development will not be in the comes to local district, it sets a precedent for the other three that will be. Should the council vote yes on green lighting this development, we want to remind them of what this will mean. One, they will, knowing, they, will willing, they will knowingly be making this situation of Bethel local schools worse. While they do not represent Bethel schools, this will represent the future residents that will attend it should they vote to proceed with this development. This makes New Carlisle directly responsible for worsening the situation of their own future constituents should they vote yes. Two, while this development does not impact to come to local schools, if the council votes yes to approve this, it will send a message that they do not care about either school district Bethel or Tecumseh. While this might not be their intent, many will perceive it that way. Understanding this, the City of New Carlisle Council and Administration should be prepared to have a future, to have all future developments sent to the voters as referendum petitions should this vote yes on greenlining this development to move forward. This is not a threat, but a promise on behalf of several concerned members of the public presented at this, present at this meeting tonight. Third, the city will be entering into an agreement with a developer that probably does not have the city or the Bethel local school district's best interest at heart. This is clear by the fact that at no point has the developer reached out to Bethel local schools at their own admission to understand their plight and work with them to better mitigate it. There are ways to do so, and they, and they are required by law in the other states they work in, but they choose not to implement them here. The developer, the engineer, and the potential site utility contractor are all under the same umbrella. All companies are owned by the same person, Mr. David Oakes. Mr. Oakes settled with the federal government for $2.9 million for allegedly trying to defraud the federal government in a minority-owned company case in 2013 by the name of Testec. It was proven that Mr. Oakes owned the company and not a person from a minority group. The article documenting this can be found on the Dayton Daily News website as well as the U.S. Department of Justice website. In addition to this fraud case, the developer has consistently used Ryan Holmes for all projects nationwide. The president and the senior principal for the developer have ties to NVR, which is a parent company to Ryan Holmes. It is unlikely that any local contractor will have an opportunity to bid on these projects, and more money will be funneled back to the developer rather than to the local community. Does the city truly want to work with this company for the next 10 years? In closing, while many here tonight are not actual residents of New Carlisle, and this body does not answer to us come election time, the decision made tonight will impact the whole of Southwest Clark and Southeast Miami counties. If council votes yes tonight, it will set into motion a chain reaction that will drag out and slow down not only this development, but all others that are trying to build in the city. Council needs to do the right thing and vote no tonight on all three ordinances. Show the surrounding community what being a good neighbor means, and you will find good neighbors in return. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Mills. <clears throat> all right, next. Julie Reese, 6184 Dayton Brant Road, Miami County. I am a Bethel Township trustee. Uh, you've heard from me before, I'm not gonna repeat all that. Uh, I would just like to say that at the last public hearing meeting that you held, 22 people stood up and spoke. Not one person stood up and spoke for it. There were 21 opposed and one had questions only. So just like to point that out, remind you. And the other thing is, you know, as a trustee, we are definitely against annexation. So I implore you to vote no on anything that would rezone or annex the property at Scarf and New Carlisle Roads. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Natalie, Natalie Donahue, 7835 Agon Broad Road. Thanks again for allowing us to speak here tonight. I'll just start by saying please vote no 
no on the rezoning and no on the annexation. Uh, over the past six to eight months, we've been allowed to speak and convey our thoughts on why this is not good for the Bethel and New Carlisle communities together. There is an impact of being good neighbors. We tell our children not to take things that belong to others. Please don't set a bad example. <laughs> Have integrity. When I parked across the way um, over by the volleyball, there is a sign that says, copy what you see. And um, me, as a point to say, you know, good behavior. So I, I thought that was uh, meaningful tonight as I pulled in and I thought I would mention that as I spoke tonight. <clears throat> Neighbors and residents sh should not have to lose their wonderful small town feel. We've all grown up here. People have moved here for the small town feel and many people have stayed here because they liked that same feel for their children to be raised in. Um, just since Friday, I've, I've, I've run over to the post office, to Dollar General. My husband ran into AutoZone. Next day, he came up and went to the, um, auto, uh, the other auto parts store. Uh, and then I ran into IGA. I went to Subway on Friday night gone to the bank, been to the CVS, the mar farmer's market, the Rite Aid, the Papa John's, and lastly the gas station, all within the period of Friday to Tuesday. So we do frequent this. We do give our business to the community here because it's our community as well. Even as a Bethel Township resident, I do want the best for the community because we like to be here. and. We want that to continue. I'm concerned that with the development coming in, we're just going to add a lot of people into um, a small space, a lot of homes, a lot of people. Again, it will add traffic. It may, you may not see it necessarily on the corner, as your study showed, but it will be around. It just may be at different times. And I do want to say, as we all know, developers you know, they, they come in, they do their job, and then they leave. There's no accountability after they're gone. And then the community, New Carlisle, might be left with whatever comes with it. Um, taking care of property, trying to decide um, if there's water issues or whatever. Um, I hope New Carlisle is ready for all the development. There's a lot going on up north, and it's got started before this. Focus on that, make that really good, and make this community really better before you move into annexing other people's property. Uh, I do also want to just note that the Bethel neighbors, we can't manage additional students at the school. I am a school board member, but I'm speaking here tonight as a private citizen. Um, this year we did take on, at the last two weeks before school started, 248 new students. We have kids sitting in multiple auditoriums, on stages, in the maintenance room, in any closet. There is no closet. It's a classroom. They're out in the bus barn. Um, the gifted children are sitting out in the bus barn because um, there's adequate space for them. So yes, there is a new building. It's built out. The way the, the state acts, you know, um, uh, you can't purchase anything, you can't uh, get a loan, you can't start a new skill building, and you can only plan for what you know. We couldn't have predicted that this annexation wouldn't happen. So um, we've, we've known that the one in Huber, we tried to alleviate that, but <laughs> sorry, as the annexations happen, it just really causes a lot of stress and strain on everybody. And the last point is, and I, I, again, what Julie had mentioned, at the special meeting, 22 people spoke against it. There was nobody who stood up and spoke for the annexation and rezoning, so please consider that. And my last point is, thank you. Please vote no. No more. No annexation, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. David Hefferland, um, 8602 New Carlisle Road. Um, I live, um, I'll be bordered on this by two sides. Um, I, I grew up there on New Carlisle Road, you know, grew up going through New Carlisle, going to dip the pool up there, and I, I do business in New Carlisle all the time. Um, I wanted to uh, bring up a couple things that haven't been brought up yet. Um, so uh, current economics, um, TD Economics, I've got the website. Uh, Andrew Foreign, who's an e e economist, published eight days ago, uh, 
Mortgage rates are now above 6% and the highest they've been since 2008. The Fed's aggressive stance will continue to weigh on home builders directly through higher interest rates and indirectly through uh, slowing job growth and rising unemployment rate. This has been reflected in the home builder sentiment readings with the NAHB Home Builders Index, ticking further below its 50 point threshold in September and now sitting at a 28 month low. The single family mar market has faced the lion's share of declines in home building activity in recent months. Then from Norada Real Estate Investments, uh, published September 14th, 2022 by Marco Santorelli. Um, the housing sector has been cooling down amid soaring prices of materials and rising mortgage rates. Single family housing start sank 10.1%, the lowest level since June 2020. In August 22, 2022, last month, builder sentiment fell for the eighth consecutive month as rising interest rates, ongoing supply chain issues, and high home prices continued to exacerbate housing affordability issues. The National Association of Home Builders NAHB Wells Fargo Housing Marketing Index, HMI, revealed that builder confidence in the market for newly constructed single family homes fell six, point in August, six points in August to 49, marking the first time since May 2020 that the index fell below the key break even measure of 50. Um, and then lastly, um, from NAHB, that's the National Association of Home Builders Chief Economist Robert Diaz, um, he said, Tighter monetary, monetary policy from the Federal Reserve and persistent elevated construction costs have brought a housing recession. Okay, so my point there is, you know, um, since the start of this effort, um, the economy has certainly um, had problems. You know, you know, it's very likely that maybe the economy can't support as much growth as New Carl was looking at. I know there's multiple um, projects going on. Um, and, you know, we've all talked about, you know, traffic issues and, and the, the flooding issues. I have flooding before any of this construction. Um, but if we look at New Carlisle Road, is a township road, not a county road, not a state road, a township road. Um, and there's really, topographically, there's, there's not much way to expand it. Um, and since it's a township road, there's no county money to expand it, to make it wider, to make turn lanes. Um, but if you look at some of the other areas along 235, that's a state road. There could be grants, there could be state money in the future to make turn lanes, maybe widen sections to help the traffic issues. Um, so with all those things mentioned, um, in addition to the schools, um, I have a, a daughter still going to, to Bethel. I know how crowded it is um, and it's only gonna get way, way worse. Um, I, I think there should become, you know, it, it's a good consideration. I'm not against the growth. Like I said, I grew up here, um, but there's better growth than on this little bitty road. Um, and there's and there's been brought up so many reasons for that. So and with the economy the way it is, you know, if you get halfway through this and then nobody's buying houses, you got a bunch of land sitting there, you know, and, and that, you know, that's not good. And, and it's and then it's it's stagnant, stagnant development. That's bad for all of us. So I encourage you to, to vote no on, on these tonight um, and consider some of those ideas of, of how at least the traffic would be better on 235, how the state might have grants and, and money that can help, help the city with that. So thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Lostetter, 7950 East New Carlisle Road. Um, I don't have a bunch of numbers to go over, um, I, and I know they've hit on a lot of it already, but <clears throat> I will say that my six-year-old daughter is one of those brand new students at Bethel, and when we walk through that school for her open house, closets had desks in them that teachers are in, closets. My daughter asked me, why is there a desk? Why is there a teacher sitting in there? And I'd explain to her why. So I'm not gonna talk about traffic and I'm not gonna talk about all the other reasons why I'm against it, but I am gonna ask you, the, the five or six that will vote tonight, if you had children, I don't know if you do or not, would you want your child to have to go to a school like that? You know, we're, we're doing everything we can. We're building new schools. 
we're, we're, we're trying to add space anywhere we can. And you hold a vote in your hand to just cripple that school by saying yes or no tonight. So I'm just asking you to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. All right. Brian Barnhart, 8750 East Nuclear Road. I watched the video, I saw it last month too. Um, it's, it's not reality, <laughs> it's virtual. Can you speak up just a little, sir? It's not reality, it's virtual, that, that video, obviously. Um, that area to the north is uh, not nice and green. Well, it's green, all right, but uh, you need your hip boot waders to go back in there most of the year. and. Uh, you try to mow it, you'll get stuck, get your mower stuck. So it's potentially a messy area back there in the back, in that green area. So that's not real. There's every kind of manner of creature back there crawling around, snakes. Speaking of snakes, uh, you know there's a saying, that there's, the devil's in the details. Well, you know, I've been coming to these meetings several times now and there's very little detail about what the plan really is. Um, we know about how many houses and about where they're going to be, but very little beyond that. Um, it's kind of disappointing. You know, I've lived in the current house there for 24 years, and I've spent about 10 years on Scarf Road, also in Miami County. I've grown accustomed to the, the lifestyle that we enjoy as, as township residents, you know. Many of myself and neighbors, we enjoy outdoor things. Um, we have recreational fires that are lawful certain times of the year. Um, there's going to be smoke from those. I mean, I know when the neighbor's burning, and he knows when I'm burning. And um, There's hunting that goes on in these areas. There's target shooting that goes on. You're going to hear gunshots. I mean, that's part of the life that I'm used to, and it's not alarming to me. It's something that... I enjoy because my neighbors enjoy. So this potentially disrupts that. And I know it's not all about me, but I'm just saying that it is a, uh, it is a change for the residents around there. And so for those reasons and uh, others that have been shared here tonight, I'm opposed to it. Appreciate being able to make that known. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else? How you doing there, Jay Sandberg, 925 Leatherwood Drive. I'm on the Clark County side of this. You're hearing all kind of issues from everybody on the Miami County side that basically you got control over a whole lot of things that they got no say in, which I don't think is right, but that's a whole nother issue, I suppose. Um, being on the Clark County side, living in the town, being in a resident for 50 years, again, I one of them people that is opposed to change like the style of the town but uh i got skin in the game here uh, again like some other people said they're going to do their job make their money leave take off and that's what it is but i got to live here with whatever happens over in that neck of the woods that's where i live so still opposed to it nothing's changed i'm sure if i would ask everybody to raise their hand here that is opposed to it i'm going to get everybody in this audience to do it so there we go. Thank you, sir. Next. Good evening, Jeff Moore, 4720 South Scarf Road. I'm one member of a family that owns property at 4720 South Scarf Road. And as always, we are against this because of environmental and habitat reasons. Every time I come here, I explain to you what the lake is, what it looks like, what it should be, and what the way we want to keep it and not the potential of a problem. Uh, I would like to thank New Carlisle Council for their patience and willingness to give all the New Carlisle community a chance to voice their position as it relates to the development of Scarf and Lake. 
I've you, I hope you have listened to each individual as intently as you have listened to the development company's sales pitch, taking all information into account. Uh, I'll pass up some, keep, keep it going here. I would like to thank the New Carlisle community, which includes the New Carlisle citizens and extended New Carlisle community on New Carlisle Road, Eastland, Westland, Scarf, both directions, Highland Drive, and beyond. I would like to thank all those who spent hours on their computers researching school issues, housing comparisons, annexation issues, housing density issues, in general, all your hard work. I would like to thank all that who attended the referendum preparatory meetings, taking time out of their busy schedules. I would especially like to thank my wife and family for their support over the many months. It has not been easy, but it was something that had to be done. It would have been, would have been easy to just let things ride and offer no resistance. But sometimes something of great importance comes forward and action needs to be taken. In a few minutes, the New Carlisle City Council will vote on the potential development in question. I hope the council will vote no. But be assured, with the New Carlisle community's help, if necessary, by means of a referendum petition and spring election, we can change the course of events. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? All right, moving on. Janelle. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, Janelle, I didn't see your hand. There's a taller person in front of you. Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I would just like to encourage all the councilmen to vote no on the annexation and on the other two referendums too. I think for all the reasons stated here, and I just don't feel that that section of land is going to be a good fit for New Carlisle and for them to be part of our community. Their children are going to be going to different schools than everyone else in the city. So I don't think they're gonna really feel part of the community. And just obviously, that almost wetland is never going to look like that park they show. It, I mean, it's an impossibility. And I don't think it's fair to the people who are going to be getting homes there. And I think they're going to be difficult to sell, partly because of that. So I just would urge everyone. We've, we've got several other options that are just in better places in the city, I think, for us to look at. So I would just ask all of you to to vote no on these resolutions. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Appreciate it. Right, anyone else? All right, moving on. Comments from members of the public. Resolutions done tonight. Ordinances. Ms. Burner, can you start us off, please? Sure. We have Ordinance 2022-42, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance changing the zoning of approximately 115.3 acres at 8805 East New Carlisle Road, Bethel Township, Miami County, Ohio, from A2 General Agricultural District, Bethel Township, to RPUD Residential Planned Unit Development and approving a preliminary planned unit development plan contingent upon successful annexation. Thank you. Council. So good. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Mr. Bridge. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, this would actually rezone the 115 acres and then actually approve the actual plan, which would be further detailed in the final plan. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions, comments, feedback, all the above? All right, well, I just had a few things I wanted to say and go over, and I apologize if it gets jumbled because when I start talking about things, and such depth because this is such a large project a large is like many of you said this has been going on for months so and you know 
uh, you know, being on council, you know, I'm, I'm, this is my 11th year being on city council, and this is the first time I've ever had to do anything like this. So it's been a learning experience for me and probably most of everyone up here, uh, Mr. Bridge, the administration, uh, probably some of you as well. Um, you know, I've been on council for 11 years, but I've lived in New Kalama my entire life, 44 years. Um, you know, and over, over the past, you know, months, you, you know, we've heard comments from, you know, a lot of, a lot of you folks from outside of town, a lot in, and you know, some people, you know, you know, hollering on social media that you know, we're here for, you know, we're to line our pockets and we don't care about the city. We, you know, we don't care about our neighbors. And it, you know, uh, and, and actually, before I go any farther on that, you know, everyone that spoke tonight and that has been here consistently, thank you because you guys have all kept your kept calm, kept cool, and, and that's what we need. Um, but you know, I take it personally when anybody says that you know we are, you know, no one's up here for the fun of it. This is not a fun job most of the time, but. But you know, for 44 years I've lived here. I've got you know three kids and you know a grandson. So this town means a lot to me, just as as much as it does to some of the folks that have been here for for long. Um, you know, we had conversations with people early on in this, saying, "Well, you know, we don't need houses, we don't need systems, we need businesses." Well, I agree, but you can't have businesses without. With, and let me finish. Don't get excited. We can't have more businesses or better businesses or or keep some businesses afloat without more. Um, you know, citizens or rooftops, if you will. Um, you know, I, I would love to see a Taco Bell or, you know, you know, I don't, I don't want to see New Carlisle become a Huber Heights. That's, that seems to be what everybody jumps to. We don't want to live in Huber Heights. I don't want to live in Huber Heights. If New Carlisle became that size, I'd be gone. I like the smaller town feel, but I do think New Carlisle needs to grow a little bit. I'm not saying to 10 to 12, 15,000. I mean, that day may come when I'm old and gone or, or you know, whenever that may be. But I think New Carlisle does need to grow to some extent. I've talked to so many of the businesses in this town and they are just, they are itching for new people to be in this town to help support their businesses. Uh, the Sugar Shelf down on Main Street, Abe Sudden Treasures, IGA Grocery Store. That, 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 I mean, they need more customers. And I know a lot of you do support uh, you know, the local businesses and they appreciate that, we appreciate that. But they, we need just a little bit more umph behind our, our, our citizen account, basically. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's the way I see it. I don't think jumping New Carlisle's population to seven to 8,000, it's not gonna lose the hometown feel. I mean, you know, when I drive through Tip City, I think Tip's, what, maybe around 10,000, give or take? Just uh, under 11. 11. Just under, okay, so a little under 11. And I love Tip City. I mean, I'm not gonna move there, but to me, that's still a small town. I mean, it's a little busier because it's right there on the highway. Um, but, you know, my opinion is, is New Carlisle does need to grow some. Uh, at what cost? It depends on who you ask. I'm not. I'm not a fan of. Let me ask. A, I do want to ask one quick question before I get it gets off the topic just a little. I just want a quick answer. I don't want to get a, the whole room into another discussion. As far as Bethel School, is too small. I, I I hear you. Do they have land to grow? Is there room to grow if they had ten million dollars? Yes, they do. They don't have any land. I was just curious. I wanted to ask that. Earlier. I didn't know my thing. Okay, so I mean it's kind of irrelevant in the in the whole discussion. I was just kind of curious. I know you guys said you were you were at your capacity. I was just curious if there was room there if you had the financial ability to do so. But anyway, so that, you know that's where I'm at with New Carlisle. I've lived here my life. I've, my kids are probably going to raise their kids here, and so on and so on. I want nothing but the best for this city. But I also like what you know. A lot of you said that we need to be good neighbors. Um, at the end of the day, I, is this project is a scope. Crossing county lines is not for me. Um, it doesn't feel right going that direction. I, I think the city needs to grow, but I'm not sure that's the right direction. Uh, and, and, and this may sound awful. I'm not saying that what you guys aren't saying is like, you know, uh, Janelle, love you to death, but when you say that they can't build a uh, build a housing development in that area, I've, I've seen uh, factories go up in much worse areas. So, I mean, we have some really smart people in the United States. They can they can get things done. Uh, so I don't see that being a problem. But um, you know, like I said, my my issue is this crossing county lines. We 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 have an identity issue right now for those of you who live in New Carlisle with, with Park Lane because they have the same address. People I'll see people get online and they'll be like, well, I'm tired of New Carlisle's water bills, and someone will chime in from maybe the city and they'll be like, well, where do you live, Steyer? 
you're not in the city of New Kalau. Yes, I am. Like, no, you're not. You're not the city. So we already have that issue of people that aren't necessarily sure where they live. And I think being in two counties now would even make that just worse. And now we're going to deal with the park main, and now we're going to be over here. So, um, I, you know, I hear all your guys' concerns, and I, I have my own as well. So that's I just wanted to give that little spiel. That's all I got to say. So thank you. Just I just want to respond to your, your, your Bethel question. Um, while they may have land, as you may know, the building the new building now, um, it will be over capacity when it's when this first student walks in, it will already be over capacity yeah. based on the, the, the growth that's already there. Okay. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor so, so does anybody else have any comments, feedback for this group? <clears throat> All right, I guess we will go for the vote. Councilman Lindsay? No. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? No. That motion fails one to five. All right, thank you, Ms. Burner. If you will move on to the next two ordinances, please. Ordinance 2022-43, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a pre-annexation agreement with Cap 5 Development LLC and the current property owners. Um, before council decides to, I just want to mention, because I spoke with the city attorney on this, um, we can handle this either way. Uh, I asked him just which way, if, depending on how things went tonight, if there was a failure, how would these two be handled? It could, it could be made a motion and voted on or it could die for lack of motion. So it's, it's however council wants to move forward. It's up to you guys, so. Let it die for lack of motion. So okay. Lack of motion. And then the next one. Ordinance 2022-44, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance regarding the arrangement for provision of improvements for an RPUD planned unit development district. All right. And that is it. Other business, none. Executive session, none tonight. Uh, no, uh, that's it. Uh, I just have one quick announcement, even though it's not on the agenda. Uh, since we have such a large group, don't forget the Heritage Flight Festival is this weekend, downtown Main Street. So don't forget to support New Carlisle, all you people outside. <laughs> Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell to adjourn. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Oh, yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Oh, Accepted. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.